Welcome back everyone. We are back now with our sixth practice talk. Uh, today I'm very happy to welcome uh, Hilda Klaski from Oak Ridge National uh, Laboratory. Welcome Hilda. Hi and um, thank you so much for inviting us. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. So how, how was your weekend? We're restarting today with camp with the second week. Did you have a nice weekend? I had a really nice weekend, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was restful. Uh, I live in Oakland and we are by the uh, Smoky Mountains. So there is the opportunity to go for a hike or two during the weekend and it's really enjoyable. That's, that's nice. Yeah, the weather is also getting nice over here, so that's an opportunity to, to go outside. Um, well, we, we are really curious to hear about your analysis and your presentation, so you have um, You have done some work specifically on uh, healthcare, uh, multiple healthcare processes. And as other viewers who are working in process mining in the healthcare space already know, is that uh, this can be quite complex. And specifically, the data side of um, yeah, the healthcare data, it can take quite some work to get it ready and uh, to be able to analyze it properly for process mining. So I actually asked Hilda specifically, yeah, not to. Um, be too abstract or to simplify too much, but really to show us also the steps she had to go through uh, to get the data to the level that um, yeah, it could be analyzed. So we are really yeah, looking forward to your presentation. Please, uh, Hilda, um, you can start now. Yeah, thank you very much, Han. Yes, hello, everyone. I, I work at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And today I'm going to talk about feature engineering to produce process mining data for clinical order processes from electronic health record systems. We are happy to share our lessons learned and hope that we find our experience insightful and that you can customize our approach and apply it to your pro work in process mining. For those who are not familiar with Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Oak Ridge National Laboratory is the United States Department of Energy's largest science and energy laboratory. ONL was established in 1943 as part of the secret Manhattan Project to pioneer a method for producing and separating plutonium. And this picture is one uh, of the main campuses at the lab. Uh, during the 1950s and 1960s, ONL became an international center for the study of nuclear energy and related research in the physical and life sciences. With the creation of the Department of Energy in the 1970s, ONL mission broadened to include a variety of energy technologies and strategies. Today, the laboratory supports the nation with a piston science and technology mission that is just as important as, but very different from its role during the Manhattan Project. We have about 4,000 employees working here. Most of them are researchers. ORML is the home of the world's premier center for high performance supercomputing to enable scientific discovery. ORML has an extensive expertise in various areas of computer science that are uniquely situated to support other United States federal entities, as well as non-federal government entities, universities, and large scale, scale large enterprise businesses. And is, additionally, ORNL's leading computational user facilities present a unique opportunity to leverage the largest scale machines for open sciences in support to the United States Veterans Affairs Administration Office. And the study that I'm going to talk today is related to this Veterans Affairs Administration Office. For those who are not familiar with the United States Veterans Affairs Administration Office, or VA, here is the mission statement. So in words of President Lincoln, VA was created to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan by serving and honoring the men and women who are American veterans. And there are four specific missions to make good on that commitment. The first one is the Veterans Healthcare. VA's Veterans Healthcare Administration is the largest enterprise healthcare network in the United States. 
with 1,255 healthcare facilities serving about 9 million enrolled veterans each year. Other missions are the management of the veterans' benefits, and these benefits refer to everything that is needed to help veterans to transition back to civilian life. In addition, the VA manages the national cemeteries, for not only for the veterans, but also for their families. And the fourth mission is to improve the nation's preparedness in response for war, terrorism, national emergencies, and nat natural disasters. VIA develops plans and takes such actions, not only at, at federal, but also at the state and a local level, and also helps to implement those actions. And here is the vision of the VA, is to provide veterans the world-class benefits and service they have earned, and to do so by adhering to the highest standards of compassion, commitment, excellence, professionalism, integrity, accountability, and stewardship. So ORNL partnership with VA offers an unparalleled opportunity in data analytics, deep learning, artificial intelligence, and operations improvement. So yeah, the health and safety of the veterans is a high national priority in the United States. And Veterans Affairs has reached out to VA in order to develop a partnership. So we are working on different projects. But this study refers specifically to develop approaches to detect hazards that could affect the reliability and safety of their health information technology systems. As is the case with any information technology application, health information technology or HIT systems can introduce unintended consequences into the healthcare environment. These unintended consequences reveal themselves as hazards that cause adverse events and interruptions in care delivery. An example of this is that in recent years, mass cancellations of radiology orders at VA receive attention by the media. Cancellations of more than 250,000 radiology orders at VA hospitals across the country since 2016 raise questions about whether in a rush to clear out outdated and duplicated diagnostic orders, some facilities failed to fo follow correct procedures. At issue is a concern over whether some medically necessary orders for CT scans and other imaging tests were canceled improperly. As a matter of fact, healthcare systems and health information technology systems and corporate data warehouse systems are always growing and in constant transformation. They are integrated by legacy subsystems and new state-of-the-art systems. This in fact, made us wonder if we could identify those, or cl those clinical orders that complete successfully and those that do not complete successfully. And we wonder if we could apply process mining to help on that. In our experience of, of applying process mining to healthcare information data, we see the complexity of activity sequence of HIT clinical workflows to be similar to AMAZE. Although clinical workflows should be straightforward, and most of the time are straightforward, sometimes clinical orders do not complete successfully. They might get stuck on a dead end for several reasons. It could be because of the complexity of having several subsystems emerging into a major system, or many organizations participating in the process in locations that might be in different time zones. It could be as localized as the complex graphic user interface that the clinician is dealing with, multiple options in the GUI. So yeah, these are some of the reasons that can make a percentage of the orders not to complete successfully. And this translates into a possible case in which some real patients might not receive the service they need. 
the hazard that we are trying to identify in this study is the intended treatment of the patient is not fully con uh, completed. So in recognition of the issues presented earlier and in the absence of access to log files, we develop an approach to apply process mining and to generate activity sequences from the health, health um, electronic health rep records database. And this to allow us to promptly simplify and identify successful and not successful cases. And in, order, and in order to be able to discover and visualize clinical order processes like the radiology process, the data needed to be sig significantly condensed and pre-processed in various ways. So in this presentation, we are going to talk about the approach we developed for simplification. So let's start with, what is an electronic health record? An electronic health record is a digital version of a patient's paper chart. Electronic health records or EHRs are real-time patient-centered records that make information available instantly and securely to authorized users. While, EHR, while an EHR contains medical and treatment histories for patients, EHR systems is built to go beyond standard clinical data collected in a provider's office, and it can be inclusive of a broader view of the patient's care. EHRs are a vital part of health IT, and they can contain the patient's medical history, diagnosis, medications, treatment plans, immunization dates, allergies, radiology images, and laboratory test results. They can also automate and streamline the provided workflow. And one of the key features of the EHR is that health information can be created and managed by authorized users in a digital format capable of being shared with other providers across more than one healthcare organization. Our study frames VA, VA's EHRs in its corporate data warehouse from the clinical orders perspective. And the reason being is because a clinical order is identified as, the, as an atomic process in the overall healthcare delivery. In this slide, we can see the entity relationship diagrams of some of the data domains that we utilize. In this picture, we can see the tables. The data domains that we use are radiology, consults, laboratory service, services, and outpatient medications. In addition, we include the CPRS order domain, and CPRS stands for Computerized Patient Record System which captures all clinical transactions and is common to all the data domains studied. It is like the scheduling part. I realize that this is too much detail, but the purpose is to illustrate the process, not to go to minor details. And um, uh, we use a data set that contain about 800,000 patients which were diagnosed with ischemic heart disease. This slide presents one part of the radiology domain, which we took as a sample for this presentation. And in the following slides, I'm going to talk about the data extraction and preparation. Our approach starts with the identification of actions, status updates, and transaction dates in clinical order processes through their life cycles. When we started this study, we didn't know which features were relevant and which features were not relevant. Thus, we decided to include them all. So we select all columns that are date types in the given data domains. It was easy to identify those because the date name is appended to the name of the column. We also included those columns that store activities or status values with the hope to be able to identify steps in the process and include them in the extraction and data preparation. During data preparation, we constructed activity sequences for each data domain using two formats. The first one that I'm presenting here is the horizontal sequence, uh, which is basically a long row of data.
this long row of data has basically two components. First, the de-identified case ID from the process mining perspective. And the second component is the sequence of activities, which is the activity name followed by the timestamp. And here we have a temporal timeline of, for a sequence. This is a sample of a raw sequence of activities that we found in the data. Notice how some activities seem to take place in groups, as in a cluster. Those activities usually have the same timestamp. The other format that we utilized during our study and during the, our data preparation was a three column table, which everybody is familiar with as we use this format as an input for the disco software. Each case was sorted by timestamp and activity in, a, in an ascending order. We found out that the selection of all fields was way too complex to analyze. This slide shows a process map generated with DISCO with only 25% of the paths for, of the radiology data set. We didn't know what the resulting process map was going to be like. It is very complex, including too many details related to status changes in order to get a high level process overview does not work very well. This level of details not only does not work with the process stakeholders with whom we wanted to discuss the process, we all felt overwhelmed by such a complicated flow. Here we see the resulting process map with zero paths, which is still complex. Activities seem to move in three main cycles joined by the complete status. In this case, we can see that the process map has multiple complete activities. This repeating activity in multiple contexts throughout the process creates false loops that are not actually loops. But here, a lack of specificity in the activity names creates spider-like activities. So we wonder, is this the complete of the radiology exam status column or the complete from the radiology nuclear medicine order table? Initially, we didn't know that there were multiple activity val activities values with the same name in different contexts and with different time stops. We realized that it is important to clearly identify each activity with a unique name to avoid the creation of false loops. Now, we have in our radiology data set, 160,000 cases, 335,000 variants, 18.5 million events. And this is just for six months of data. Data set like this one will take months to just study one case. As we're working with a very large data set with many variants in a very detailed level and many different types of activities, we looked for ways to simplify it. This is how we look into models that could help us to, simplif to simplify the model and identify the failed cases. And here we see the OACS human task specific specification standard state transition diagram. OACS is the Organization for the Advancement of a Structured Information Standard, a non-for-profit non international consortium that drives the development, convergence, and adoption of open standards for the global information society. So this slide presents the human task and it says the following, the task behavior and the state transitions are as follow. Upon creation, a task goes into the created state. There is no need to have a task owner in this state. The task remains in the created state until it is activated and has potential owners. 
when a task has multiple potential owners or is assigned to a work queue, it transitions into the ready state, indicating that it can be claimed by one of its potential owners. When a task is claimed by a single owner, it transitions into the reserve state, indicating that it is assigned to a single actual owner. The current actual owner of a human task or, or a task in general can release the task to again make it available for, a, for all potential owners. Once work is started on a task and it, that is in the ready or in the reserve state, it goes into the in progress state indicating that it is being worked on. A task will go into the suspended state when a suspended operation is invoked or a suspended activity is received. On successful completion of the work, the task transitions into the complete final termination. Here in red, we see that on, on unsuccessful completion of the work, the task transitions into the failed final state termination. Other termination states are here shown in the lower right corner of the screen in purple. First, a non-recoverable error activity will make a task transition into the error final state termination. A receive activity, a receive exit activity will make the task transition into the exceeded final state termination. Finally, a skip operation invoke, and if the task is skippable, will cause a task to go to the obsolete final state termination. I realize that this is a complex diagram, but I want to emphasize that all tasks can be broken into the states presented in this figure. The path in green shows the normal, most common successful path of, complete, of, com of completion of a task. And why is this so important? We use this diagram to add another layer of abstraction on top of the row sequence to help us classify activities and to identify unsuccessful complete sequences and not successful sequences. In the next series of slides, I will explain why this is so important in our study. In the next slide, we have an example that illustrates how we take the states and map them to the activity in the transitions. You might recall that in previous slides, we present a temporal cluster of a sample or they're illustrated on a timeline. Note, notice how several activities appear at the same time or in the same cluster. In other words, they have the same timestamp. Well, we identify each cluster with the different states from the task state transition diagram as shown in this slide. And this is the product of the mapping application of OASIS state termination. This slide shows the sample sequence of activities in vertical format for a case that completed successfully. The output of the mapping rules and the transitions is shown here. This is an, a sample of a state transition sequence with its corresponding original sequence side by side. On the column of the left, we see the raw activity sequence, and on the right, we see the corresponding state transitions. Here in blue, a radiology appointment was made. Thus, the sequence goes into the created state. In yellow, the radiology appointment has potential owners. Consequentially, it transitions to ready. In gray, the radiology appointment is assigned to an owner and is ready to take place. Therefore, the sequence goes into the reserve state. In dark green, the radiology exam is taking place. So the sequence transitions to in progress. Finally, in, in light green, the radiology exam has completed. Hence, the sequence transitions to complete. And this is a sample of a failed case. A case that did not complete successfully. On the left column, we can see the sequence of activities, and on the right co column, we see the state transitions from the OASIS standard that come out when we apply this, the, state rule trans the state transitions rule. The third case is when 
work on a task is unsuccessfully completed. In our study, we define the failed case as a case in which an order is a complete state and there is a discontinued event recorded the need transitions to fail. This is a scenario in which the patient or the clinical order is stuck in the maze. The sequence presents a discontinuum and seems to follow the normal sequence, but then it is counseled. Now imagine that those clusters of colors are not there. You will need to make sense of those sequences. And this slide presents the, rule, the rules about how we define the transitions among the different states. We associated activities to a state. We're breaking up the sequence of activities into different state classes according to their status. For example, if the enter daytime event is found in the sequence, then this signals that the sequence transitions to the created state. Another example, if the release daytime event and the new action event are found in the sequence, then those activities made the sequence to transition to ready, and so on, until the sequence presents the results daytime activity, then it transitions to complete. Or if an order is in the complete state and there is a discontinued daytime recorded, then it transitions to fail. In this table, we present as well the definitions for error and exceeded transitions. So let's walk through a sample activity sequence. Now the code to apply the rules was written, written in Python 3, and it is a simple parsing code. Here, we see the transition rule for the created state. It says, if the enter daytime event is found, transition to created. And here is the code. The code basically reads the sequence of activities and generates a list of the statuses. So it reads the case ID and then follows by, the, by a Python list. And then it just, if the enter data is found in the list, transition the state variable to create it and generate a new list that it is a sequence of tuples with the states for the given case, case and the time is done. So let's walk through the horizontal sequence that is a long row. Here we see that we, in, we found the enter data activity. Thus we know that it is in the created state. And here is the corresponding created state in the temporal clustering of the sample in a timeline. So yeah, of course, we will show cases where this involved. However, it was not the case. Very soon we found that determining the state of other cases was a complex task as well. During our study, we found that there are three possible cases that could be in the ready state. In this slide, we present two of them. And it is the following. If the release date time and the new action are taken, then transition to ready. Or if the release date time and the release hold action are taken, an order is at suspended, then transition to ready. And you might recall that the, from ready, you can go to the suspended. So we found that this hold event in the database. So we know that, okay, it comes from hold, then it's back into the queue. And this is the third case. It says the following, if the release date time and the sign date time are found and the order is not already, and there is no order stop date time recorded, then transition to ready. And this last case is a case in a raw sequence example. Here, we, we are in created, then we identify the release date time and the sign date time. And the order is not already since we just passed the created state and there is no order stop date time recorded. And here is the slide 
we see the corresponding ready state in the temporal clustering of the sample in a timeline. The following states move on in a similar fashion until we find the complete state. The complete rule says if the result state time is found in the sequence, then transition to complete. And here is the code. So let's walk through our long row in the at the lower left side of the screen. You can see the result state time activity. So we know that this is a complete. And here we can see the corresponding complete state and the cluster of activities that happen in this state in the timeline. And complete is a considered a successful termination state. This slide presents the rules for the unsuccessful termination states. The OHC's definition of the error state is a non-recoverable error activity will, take, will make the task transition into the error final state termination. So our rule says, if, an or, if a clinical order is a ready state and there is a discontinued daytime recorder, then transition to error. For the fail case, the OAC's definition says, on, on, on successful completion of the work, the task transition into the final state termination. And our application of this rule to our data set is the following. If the order is a completed and there is a discontinued daytime recorder, then transition to fail. Finally, the exceeded case, the OAC's definition says, a received exit activity will make the task transition into the exceeded final state termination. And the rule that we identify for, it, for this is if the discontinued daytime recorder else not that complete already, then transition to exceeded. So here we have our radiology order fail exam. And here we see that a fail case is the one in which an order is a completed and there is a discontinued item recorded, then it transitions to fail. Here we see the complete and also the discontinued item. So the parsing generated a new sequences with the states based on the rules. <clears throat> and this is the outcome of our study. This is a major discovery we identified. This process mining diagram shows the state transition diagram of radiology orders and present the number of transitions and mean durations. In this process model map, we observe the sequence of, act of activities that complete successfully and the sequence of activities that did not complete successfully. So, <clears throat> Here we appreciate that more for this data set during the observation period, most cases complete successfully, about 76%. And we also found out that the percentage of orders that, that go into the error state is about 2%, and the percentage of orders that go into the exceeded termination state is about 22%. And the fail case has 0.01%. So this animation shows filtered data in DISCO to keep only the cases that end with an error state. Here we get more into the details about those sequences that failed by examining the video sample of these sequences. This is an example of the objective of this study, to be able to identify those anomalies in the health information technology systems at VA. In this animation, we observe different patterns of radiology orders that do not complete successfully. Most transactions that end in the error state do not perform any other states other than the complete and then the create state. And here we can see them on the right moving right now. From create, it goes directly to fail.
transactions that I'm sorry, they go to error. Transactions that transactions that fail usually complete, but then they are marked with activities of discontinued actions and those failed. And transactions that exceeded never complete, but seem to follow the normal path. This has orders of patients that have not received care intended of intended for them, or they are orders that probably were imported into the systems and they are somehow duplicated. And this slide presents the updated radiology process model map with frequencies. I have included blocks for each of the state transitions. This process model map has unique names for each activity. There, there is no confusion with the complete status that appear on different contexts. On the upper right side, we see the series of activities that happen in the created state. In the lower right side, we see the cluster of activities that happen during the ready, ready state. In the upper center, we see the cluster of activities that happen during the reserve state, followed by the in progress cluster of activities, and then the complete cluster of activities. And on the upper left, we see the error exceeded and fail activities, which are associated with the different types of cases that have the discontinued event termination event. Some analysis of our results. We compare complete cases against fail, exceeded, and error cases. We observe that complete cases in general follow similar patterns. The activities mostly follow a sequence with few loops, we spend similar amounts of time in between the steps, and the times from start to end were regular. In contrast, the fail, exceeded, and error cases often use unusual activities. They include zero time stamps, you know, those dates that are far in the past or far in the future. They are incomplete and they present extra loops. As a summary, we see that a in recognition to the need to investigate the orders that complete successfully and those that do not complete successfully, and to find out when the treatment of the patient did not get fully completed, and in the absence of well-defined activity logs, in this study, we performed the following task. We extracted features that represent raw activity sequences from the data domains of the study. We mined dates, actions, and status updates from various parts of the database to generate raw activity sequences. We leverage temporal clustering to easy the interpretation of raw activity sequences and distinguish co coherent clusters of activities occurring together. We adopted the OASIS human task specification state transition diagram standard to simplify clinical order transactions for radiology. And we apply process mining to identify process model maps and metrics of frequency and performance and to identify performance bottlenecks and potential anomalies that could become hazards in HIT systems. Some of the strategies are working for us. Sorting event sequences not only by date, but also by activity name, reduce the number of variants to about a quarter of the data set. Also, it is important to distinguish each feature with a dis distinct, unique name. Otherwise, we might see spider-like areas in the process maps from events with the same name, but, with different, with, but in different contexts, which create false loops. And mapping the data set activities to the OASIS human task state transition diagram was extremely helpful to rapidly identify and visualize those cases that ended in error states, such as fail, exceeded, and error. Data quality problems that we encounter. Our study detected redundancy on data where some values refer to the same class but are entered with different names. And here are some examples where, for example, the complete name is, is typed in just with small letters, then complete with capital letters versus complete all with caps, versus completed in past tense in capital, versus completed in all small letters versus COM. All those refer to the same class. Also, 
um, daylight savings time can affect the analysis and impact process maps. So we need to pay attention uh, to activities recorded du during daylight savings times, since there are orders converging into a major system from several parts of the world. And here is. And our study detected zero time stamps, and we filtered those uh, in order to identify the real durations and frequencies. So, conclusion uh, next to radio the radiology domain, we also apply process mining to data sets for consults, laboratory services, outpatient medication, and computerized patient record systems, CPRS order. Uh, which is a kind of like a scheduling. So we develop and, and create an initial set of uh, metrics and key performance indicators uh, have been outlined as baseline from the discovery process models. Um, we noticed that radiology and consoles process maps have fewer case variants than other process maps generated such as lab service or Rx out. Uh, meaning outpatient medications. And when I'm talking about fewer cases, I mean, we're talking in the process of hundreds of thousands. Um, I, I find interesting to observe that radiology and consults seem to have 80% of the variance to have more than two cases, up to thousands of cases, and 20% are completely distinct. And the contrary happens with laboratory service and outpatient medication. While 80% are unique cases, 20% go to have more than uh, two cases. Uh, so yeah, we're still uh, learning strategies uh, to, to be able to properly handle and analysis of those cases. Uh, we found cases that keep looping, like rescheduling appointments, are discontinued eventually, and they are dis destined to fail. These are examples of possible anomalies that could become HIT hazards. Um, the frequencies are higher on those activities related to CPR disorder domain because it seems that all of all the flow of the system goes there at the beginning of the process and at the end as well does we recommend uh, to give a special attention to the it resources that maintain these data domain including the storage network bandwidth memory and processor speed and of course cyber security just combining event sequences with a powerful visualization tool like process mining can reveal important aspects of the data that are hard to interpret otherwise. So this is my talk. I, I, this work was performed at Oak Ridge National Laboratory and it was sponsored by the Veterans Affairs Administration. And this is the paper of our work. Um, uh, in, uh, in this presentation, and it is available at the conference proceedings of the AMIA Virtual Informat Informatics Summit 2020. And also, the, uh, my work report is available at the Department of Energy Office, Office of Scientific and Technical Information, OSTI.gov. So, we can discuss further in, our pro in the process mining camp community Slack. You can also email me at classkhb at ornl.gov. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Thank you very much, Hilda. Thanks for sharing all these nitty-gritty details, uh, how you made the data suitable. 
Uh, and I can already see from the from the reactions in the Slack that some people uh, recognize uh, those challenges. And uh, yeah, so there are some some challenges that you sometimes have, like these spider activities that you found in the data. Um, but also, um, people already gave the feedback that they uh, recognize or have maybe encountered similar situations where such a semantic grouping was necessary and where you found where you find a lot of timestamps with with the same or a lot of activities with the same timestamp right so that you have the data on a too detailed level which is really very technical and noisy and that you actually need to do something to bring it on a on a level that's understandable by, by by business users or people who are yeah responsible for the process or even for your own analysis. So that's maybe my my first question also here for you is um, yeah. So did you even show the very complex spaghetti process to anyone working in the process, or like let's say a more raw version, and then had the chance to show them the simplified process map? And uh, yeah, did you see the the difference for that? Yeah, yeah, you know, in the spaghetti diagram, it's just a reflection of the real database, you know, it just so this amazing amount of data that is overwhelming and um, and being able to have process mining to be able to identify and, and extract the process model map. I mean, what a big relief you feel, right? right? Because you know, on the database, you only see columns and numbers and lots of data. But being able to see, to, to step back and being able to capture and understand the process and follow it from the beginning to end and identify what the beginning to and, and, and the end is, right? I mean, all that has been very helpful. And at the, in the team, we all felt overwhelmed. You know, we, it's, you know it's frightening. You know, I just, um, healthcare is one fifth of the economy in the United States. So we're talking about about a lot of money being placed in this industry and a lot of data being generated. And also, you know, we, we need to uh, produce results and make sense and help all sponsors to make sense of the data. And, and I think, yeah, uh, it had been it, it have been very helpful to apply process mining. And, and yes, uh, we, we felt overwhelmed. Right, no, that's, that's very, yeah, recognizable and yeah, so indeed also maybe a good reminder for every process miner who is standing in front of such a yeah, pile of data which is so big and so detailed that yeah, maybe almost um, inclined to give up, to not give up, but to actually look at how you can simplify the data. And there might be different angles to that because yeah, so the, the, the spider activities here where the same event came back in different contexts which created this kind of false loop that was just one problem, but if just filtering out this one would not have uh, by itself um, simplified the data enough so you were looking for this mapping and the oasis um, standard was a good model here for this um, for this process one one thing i was wondering with respect to that so the the oasis task model it's centered around a task right that's being created scheduled so it's i think very suitable for a process like this one where it's a, the whole process is about uh, for example a particular exam or a, 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 yeah, a radiology exam for example that yeah has to be completed but if what would be your um idea about processes which are maybe more have a have a wider scope and are longer and involve yeah, multiple tasks. Uh, is it still? Would it be still a suitable abstraction mechanism, or would you be looking for something else? Well, no. I I think that we can still apply it because I think that I really think that uh, all tasks can be se can be divided in, the, in separated in these uh, steps. You know, in this all tasks go through these um, um, states and. What is very helpful, in my opinion, is to be able to identify the cluster of activities that happen into the different states. So now I can filter and study a more focus and, and perform a more, more focused study and mm -hmm. find out, OK, wh what is happening in this created state? And it seems to happen, most of them, in a particular uh, data domain, that is the CPS order system, which seem to uh, focus on the on both the created and the is uh, in the process to schedule uh, to get to get it ready so you know now i know where things are coming from 
um, whether there will be another way to to do it for different um, domains. Um, yes, and actually, before we start using Oasis framework, we tried to create our own states framework. So we didn't call it created and 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 ready and but but we had something similar. Mm -hmm. And then we adopted OASIS because it is, it is a re recognized international uh, standard for the human task. And we thought, well, this is actually, it already has everything that we wanted to, uh, how we wanted to classify and categorize the different steps that are happening. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think it's great. I mean, I, I like um, the study that we, that we made and how it helped us, it has helped us to identify and simplify it and identify like, okay, we have another layer of abstraction on top of the raw sequence, which is overwhelming, right? And now we can talk at a more a human level. I, I do think that it can be applied to everywhere with the process can be defined as a task. Right, yes. I agree. So, so here it did work, but even yeah, even if in a certain domain, maybe a, a more domain-specific way of abstracting is needed, the same principle can be applied, right? Just with a with a different model. That, that that's right. Yeah. So, um, for example, when I saw already here the yeah, by the way, all of you of course can uh, continue the discussion and join us uh, in the in the or. ORNL channel in the Slack community. So I see some people already um, posting some messages there. So for example, Jeff was wondering, uh, was there a particular reason that you did the data pre-processing in Python? Or I think one of your colleagues in the team was doing that. Was there a decision specific for that? Or was that the tools that you have been working with in the past? Um, yes, we have been working in the past with this um, uh, previously. Um, and you know, you, you we, this is the first time we apply process mining. And um, so, uh, although we have the Disco tool, uh, we, we ordered because it's so efficient, it helps us to be more, more um, to produce results faster. Uh, we, are, we were also very familiar with Python, which is we have applied Python on every other project we have. So some preprocessing was faster to perform in Python right manually. We're, we were familiar with that, so we use that. Right. <laughs> And uh, did you have a, a split of work in your team? So were, uh, were your colleagues doing <laughs> the data preparation and you were doing all the process mining or did you do the analysis also as a team? Can you oh, maybe? Well, well, you know, yeah, yes, uh, our, our team, remember the, the main, pro, the main um, uh, goal of the team is the um, fine uh, hazards in HIT systems. So we did uh, perform, uh, I work with, uh, in this task, I work with Osgur, Osmer, and we performed lots of feature engineering data uh, process and, and preparation and and um, and some analysis. And we have uh, other members of the team who perform more uh, an advanced analysis on hazard detection on HIT systems. And other members of the team who perform um, who uh, take the prototypes and develop a more robust prototype. Um, and of course, the subject matter experts who are guiding us through all the process. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing your work. So I would say, um, yeah, let's let's meet again tomorrow and let's continue the discussion in the Slack community. And then um, tomorrow you will be back and we will take, talk some more. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Hilda. See you all tomorrow at the same time for our second day. Bye bye. Welcome back everyone for day seven of this year's process mining camp. Um, as every day, uh, we're starting out with the process mining cafe where we welcome back the speaker of the previous day. So today I'm here again with Hilda Klaski from Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Hi, hi Hilda, welcome back. Hi Anne, thank you for having me again. <laughs> of course, thanks for coming on again. I, I just heard uh, while we were preparing and setting everything up for the session that your camp t-shirts have arrived. Ours have arrived too, actually. So we could have worn 
uh, the t-shirts today and be in yes. style. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. My 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 actually my my teachers arrive uh, really really fast. I mean, I place my order on Sunday after the workshop, mm -hmm. and they arrive on Tuesday. So I was really excited when I saw them, and they, they are great. I mean, I, it's a nice thing to have. <laughs> great. Okay, I'm, I'm glad to hear that this that this worked out. Um, yes, yeah, so we had a lot of. Um, interesting discussions in the community and people really liked um, the way that you you showed um, how you dealt with the, the, the complexity of the data, right? So um, going up a level of abstraction, like Antonio said, and the clustering of the labels. And Carmen, for example, found the uh, the approach to use the OASIS, OASIS standard uh, as a mapping template uh, inspiring. And a friend also took away a lot of ideas for how to simplify complex data sets. And in fact, it re even started a little bit of a discussion about which kind of data preparation tools um, people are using and why and which kind of workflows um, yeah, are, yeah, are, are suitable for the data preparation. But there were also some, of course, some follow-up questions for your project and your presentation so I wanted to ask you some some more about um, them so for example uh, Fran was curious how you actually decided to to do the mapping to the oasis categories from the raw data can you say a little bit more about that yeah sure uh, well each case is sort by timestamp and activity in ascending order so um, from there we uh, we we identify each one of the activities and in classic in pretty much you know it happened like by classes and where we were able to map one to one to the different oasis um, states and it, it was just right on the mark you know it just was like yeah we started identifying here are the cluster of activities that happen in the created they are at the beginning of the uh, sequence and then we saw oh yeah here is already this has to be the reserve and this is a, in progress of course and the following was completed and then we start to see also the ones that went into on hold states that went into the suspended then back to the active states ready reserve or in progress so um in our case it just map almost one to one right and that's also so you already yeah just uh, mentioned already that you were sorting the events based on the timestamp right because a friend was also wondering how you accomplished the temporal clustering um, did you do anything yeah, more than it, sorting per timestamp or something but yeah, we, we sorted by timestamp and by activity as mm -hmm. well yeah. in ascending order. So everything was pretty much pre-sort uh, uh, and we use SQL to to do that in, in the database. Right. Is that that? Yeah. Okay. And then, so then you, you were looking at the the example cases and, and map the mapping itself. So it's not, there's nothing that can be done automatically here, right? If I understand you correctly, you really have to look at the data and from your understanding of the process and the meaning of the data, you go through and then you say, then you know, okay, this is something that means that it's completed uh, or that it's... That, 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 that is right. There was a lot of discussion and just discerning, right? And to where, what activities belong to which a, a state mm -hmm. and um, and because they happen in clusters and they have the same time stamp in many cases so really choosing one activity over another to select to which one makes the transaction the transition to the following state it really that didn't matter they appear all the time they appear in this sometimes in the same order but they have the same time stamp and they are sorted uh, by by activity as well. So yeah, you know, you can see the patterns there. Right. Yes, and, and sorting mm -hmm. them per activity helps to not have some random orders for the same timestamp activities, right? That's a, a technique that we've seen also sometimes. Um, Absolutely, and, and it decreases the number of variants. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, uh, um, that was really important to do. Right. It's, it's interesting to see this kind of data issue here in this context, because um, 
yeah, that you have a data set with a lot of activities that have the same timestamp. That's not yeah, completely uncommon in process mining. There's uh, many uh, processes and data sets that deal with that. So for example, if you're looking at um, yeah, administrative ERP processes like from systems like SAP, they often have just the date. And then uh, of course there can be multiple activities on the same day. And of course the process mining tool needs the timestamp to sort events in the right order. But I think in, in your case, it's also due to the level of detail of the data. So there were a lot of things yeah, happening on the same day, but it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's more due to the detail uh, rather than the, the coarse granularity of the data. Yeah, that's right. In addition, some timestamps only have the date portion mm -hmm. or the, and everything else was just zeros as if they were introduced or, or, in, or, um, or a, uh, they were uh, added to the system uh, from a legacy subsystem mm -hmm. or, or who knows when, right? So it's just like, oh, then then at the time of sorting, they appear on top because the the time part of the timestamp is zero. So you, you really don't know whether they happen after or before. Yeah. Right. I mean, so that then is a guess. That's even exactly. That's even was even another problem. The the zero timestamps exactly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So so um, another a question that Johan had that I thought was a good one too is, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he he liked the standard based approach and and uh, was wondering about the scope of the case because as we know the case ID or what you see as the case determines the scope of the process. Where does it start? Where does it end? And often you have different options there and multiple ways to look at the process. So in your case, uh, you were looking at like one um, medical request as the scope of the process. And he was wondering whether you also looked at other scopes, like for example, the scope of the, the patient or the veteran in this case. Did you consider this? Well, um, yeah, we look into clinical orders because they are the foundation or the base of the, of the process for the clinical treatment of the patient. Uh, we observe more patterns than focusing on particular patients because the privacy of the patient is very important to us and nobody has access to that. The data sets have been already identified so we don't see trends of patients or I mean we don't see particular information from patients. Right. And so does this mean mm -hmm. that even if you wanted to connect different um, exams or treatments and that were done for the same patient to look at the scope of the process from the patient's perspective, that it wouldn't be possible because the correlation isn't there in the data for, this, for the privacy yeah. reasons? Yeah, that, that is right. That is, that is correct. So we only look, you know, look into data from the pattern patterns from point of view, what are the most uh, what are what are the um, the most common flows that happen, and of course uh, for the failed case as well, right? What are the most common flows? Uh, but uh, we don't identify each any case to any uh, patient at all. Right. Okay. That's I think good. Uh, good to know and important information also. Um, yeah. You you just mentioned the failed cases. That's a that's a tricky and an interesting one, right? That also friend was wondering about how do you how do you know whether a failed case was unsuccessful rather than maybe really not needed for the patient anymore? So that's really going on to a different level. Do, yeah. Do you have any any insight on on this? Yeah. 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 This is a very good question and. Um, um, the analysis is still ongoing, right? Um, we are uh, really interested to, and, and we continue working on the different types of, of uh, unsuccessful terminations, such as the failed, the error, the exceeded, the obsolete. And um, um, it's particularly for this data set, the exceeded is particularly high, the, the frequency. So. Um, we have already identified a, a, more classifications within the exceeded case. Um, so, well, the, the analysis is, is still ongoing. So uh, there is still much to learn and, and, and lots to analyze. 
Okay, so so there's like it sounds like you're creating kind of subcategories within the exited category to look uh, at different reasons why yeah the, the case was exited to be able to do a more yeah more uh, more detailed more uh, analysis yes yeah yeah that's that's right in in enhancing it with different features uh, to find out well what is common mm -hmm. in addition to the process flow the the activity flow in that process show what other features are there that can tell us what can be going uh, not the way that we wanted and the, the system in in that the plan yeah and not the way the plan uh, the plan way right? yes yeah and that's that's i think something also very common for many process mining analysis that you're you're able to observe certain patterns and you see whether something is happening often or not often or whether something is could be a problem but to actually do the next step and to do the root cause analysis you have to go deeper and sometimes this means collecting more information and collecting yeah more data on looking at individual cases or um, getting other data attributes right to enrich the data and do this kind of deeper classification of, of root causes, if you will. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so um, some more, let's see some more questions. Uh, Philip, for example, was wondering, and I thought terminology is always important, so maybe can you briefly talk a little bit about um, the differences between how you used activities, states and state transitions? Yeah, uh, Yes, uh, we, we see a, an activity as a pursuit, right? An undertaking, something being done or that has been done. And a state is a particular condition that something or something um, is um, at a specific time, the condition. So we try to identify which activities kind of like trigger those conditions and if they appear in the sequence then we know, oh, this uh, triggers the path to the next uh, state. Right. Yes. Okay, so thanks for <coughs> clarifying this as well. And um, yeah, so um, another question that Fran was asking is how long the project took uh, so for the analysis that you presented and also how much of that time you spent with domain experts can you maybe outline a little bit the the, the project that um, how, it, how, yeah, it, how it went yeah 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 uh, the project is still ongoing and the, the work uh, presented in this presentation um, it mostly happened during 2019 um, the, the the year and we meet, we met we usually meet with our sponsor twice a month or so mm -hmm. and we're in constant uh, communication also via email asking other uh, questions um but yeah that, that's the way we have worked okay and the sponsor so that's uh, someone from from the department um where the data yeah, is yeah from? that's right yeah yeah that, that that is correct somebody from the veterans affairs administration okay a team of uh, subject management experts yes. actually okay and they were also available during your uh, project for asking questions about for example what does this mean this kind of data field uh, that you could rely on them for clarifying that oh, oh yes 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 absolutely i mean i i think that we have been very lucky to have um, the expert opinion in the guidance from our sponsors to help us understand because you know this is their field right we we gave um um, a different perspective of the analysis of the data, but uh, the specifics, um, we don't have as much experience at, as they do. So yeah, it has been very helpful working with them. That's that's really good to hear. And that's so important, right? To have access to a subject matter expert for a process that's not your own process. So you as an as a researcher, yeah, you don't you are not a domain expert yourself about this particular that's process. Right. So you have to rely on them. And I'm I'm curious so how so you said you were also in regular email contact. So did you also have kind of um, workshop sessions where you interactively showed them some things or was it more that you made a report, sent it to them and <laughs> or answering uh, were they answering concrete questions? Can you maybe explain a little yeah, bit Yeah for, for this yes. yeah for this for this particular task the that is the application of the of the um, process mining mm -hmm. to the uh, different data data sets um, I um, 
it was originally a, a request from the sponsor to look into both a uh, process mining and the uh, oasis human task specification so um i started working on this task and um as soon as i was able to accumulate enough knowledge and enough uh, data and also uh, you know ac acquire a, a license of the tool to help me work faster and help the the team uh, obtain numbers uh, frequent uh, descriptive statistics of fre frequency and performance right i, I start sending them a uh, progress of the information right and then they provide me feedback mm -hmm. of a uh, and, and that became the report right yeah through several iterations of course right yeah exactly mm -hmm. okay um Okay, so yeah, so so Brian um, also was wondering, and maybe that's a it's a good place to end to talk a little bit about the outcome of the project. So he um, he mentioned that, uh, as you said, the development of KPIs and um, the focus on studying the failures, like you like you uh, outlined, like this hazard um, situation, uh, was the the main focus of the study. Uh, he's wondering whether there were also some other improvements that um, yeah that or some, some other kind of results that maybe unexpectedly came out of this or, um, yeah, and I'm also wondering what's next for this project. Do you already have some, some next steps planned for this, for this analysis? Yes, yes. Um, I, well, yeah, you know, uh, observing how the different data it, it behaves differently, it has been really interesting. Um, the data domains for radiology and consoles are different than uh, laboratory services and uh, operation medication orders. So uh, it was interesting to see how they, they behave differently. And um, the, the scope and the goal for uh, 2019 was uh, first to demonstrate that we could apply process mining to VA data in this case for H, uh, health uh, information technology systems and we demonstrated that and we also obtained the process model maps for each of the data domains and the different metrics for frequency and performance and we observe also a, 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 where there are possible bottlenecks in data in, a, that you know is inconsistent and issues and um, so that, that, that was the scope for the first year. And cu I'm currently working on applying a process mining for conformance analysis. And I'm really excited about uh, uh, what I'm learning in, in, the, in this regard. And um, I'm also observing uh, process patterns and trying to uh, see the relationship with a uh, the absence or not absence of process patterns within the different uh, pr uh, process models, uh, how do they uh, relate to the performance bottlenecks? So I look forward and learn more uh, about uh, all, all what I'm doing and see what else can I share with all you guys. Perfect. Well, we're really curious to to see what else um, comes out of this um, analysis. So please share back the results uh, once you have follow up analysis available, and we'll yes, share them with yes. the community too. So okay, thank you. Great. So that's that's all the time we have today. We can all continue the discussion in the ORNL channel on the Slack com uh, camp community. So please, um, yeah, continue to um, to ask Kilda more more things there if you if you have more questions um, we will now go into the break again and we will be back quarter to the hour with our practice talk for today see you then